before we actually get started, um, if you have blocks at home, grab those blocks. Um, if you don't have blocks at home, grab two soup cans, bean cans, whatever out of your cabinet, because what that is going to do for you is it's going to give you um, a little leverage. So um, I have the blocks here. And what they're going to do is they're going to bring the ground closer to me. So when I'm in lunges and I'm in postures, I'm not having to round my back and start getting sloppy in a posture. So soup cans will do, blocks will do. In addition to that, I have a strap. And you may not have a strap at home. And once again, that is totally fine. You don't need to have a strap at home. You can use a towel. You can use a belt. Um, so feel free to use whatever props you have at home as we get started in this practice. We're going to start this practice in a reclined posture. So I want you to come on to your backs on your mats. I'm going to bring my feet this direction. You're welcome to lay in the same direction that I am. And here we're going to recline back and close your eyes and just notice your breath. Your legs can be long in Shavasana, or they can be bent. One of my favorite things to do is to bring my feet wide and dump my knees into one another, and that gives my low back some nice support. Another option is Supta Bhattakanasana, and that is bringing the bottoms of the feet together and the knees wide. And if you have those soup cans or blocks, placing them under your knees like a little shelf may help you to open while offering a little support. And as you settle into that posture, begin to notice your breath. Finding a nice regular, even pattern of breath. No big significant changes in your breath, but just noticing how your breath feels as you inhale and exhale. Notice what you're doing in your body as you inhale. Notice, are you clenching your jaw? Are you tightening through the neck or the shoulders? Are you clenching your hips, your low back? And in turn, notice what you're doing on your exhale. Notice how when you exhale, maybe it allows you to broaden your shoulders. Maybe it allows you to melt a little in the heart, melt a little to the low back, and relax a little bit more through the legs. Begin to deepen your breath. Begin to find a deeper breath that begins to work its way down into your belly. And as you let that breath work its way down into your belly, you can begin to feel your belly expand. As you exhale, let your belly button pull back down as if it's trying to touch your spine, your spine coming toward the floor. Inhale, lift up, expand the belly. And exhale, draw the navel back down toward the spine, releasing the breath. Again, inhale deep, expanding the belly. Exhale, soften the belly, navel to spine, and just flow with that breath a couple times. Your own rhythm of breath, your own pattern of breath. Just notice, now that you've deepened your breath, what is your body's response to that breath? And what is your breath's response to your body? Keeping that full, deep breath. Today, during our practice, we're going to focus some on perspective. It's a time where 
things around us are quickly changing and in turn we have to respond as quickly as things are changing. And sometimes changing our perspectives means getting out of our restrictions or the confinements that we placed upon ourselves. Those perceived ideas and notions that we have and maybe starting to create some sort of new perspective or new way of doing things. Find a deep breath in, pause the top of your breath. And then an open mouth sigh, release your breath. Again, inhale all the way down to the belly, to the rib cage, to the heart, open mouth, let it all go. Inhale through the nose and exhale through the nose. And find that even rhythm of inhale and exhale. Maybe begin to flutter the eyes open, drawing both knees in toward the chest for a gentle hug and just rock side to side a couple times. And maybe draw circles with your knees clockwise, massaging your low back, and then circles with your knees counterclockwise, noticing how that feels. And we're going to draw just the right knee into the chest. Let the left leg come long and settle down. And from here, maybe rock your hip side to side a couple times, noticing the hip flexor, noticing the joint of the right hip. Maybe roll the ankle out a couple times, taking once again notice of the ankle, the joint. And begin to draw that right knee in toward the right underarm. Let your left shoulder soften down and really hug the right knee in toward the right side body. Maybe that's as far as you go. Maybe your right hand finds the pinky edge of your right foot and a half happy baby. And you'll tick tock your hips side to side, just once again, opening that hip joint. Taking that same right knee, gently drape it over your body into a gentle spine twist. The left hand can settle on the knee. The right arm will open up to T from the shoulder. Take a moment and shift the body so that you find the right shoulder landing on the mat beneath you. Take a deep breath in and feel the energy of breath work its way up your right rib cage. And exhale, maybe twist a little deeper. Inhale, pulls both knees back into the chest. A little tick-tock side to side resets the spine as the left leg gets hugged into the midline of the body. The right leg comes long. Take a moment, acknowledge the hip, the joints. Rock it side to side a couple times. And then roll out the ankle. Take notice of how that feels as well, just wakening up those joints. Begin to explore pulling that left knee in toward the left underarm. Notice how that feels. The sensation might be different on this side. Each side is different, and the perspective you give your body is different on each side. Grab the pinky edge of the foot. If that felt nice on one side, introduce that half happy baby on this side. Rocking the hips side to side a couple times, changing the way it feels, noticing the sensations. Take that same knee, drape it over the body, through the right hand lands on the knee this time to give it a little extra stretch, shifting the left shoulder down. Inhale the rib cage, the left side body. And exhale, soften, twist a little deeper. Coming back through center, both knees to chest. Give yourself a big hug this morning. Sometimes the hardest thing is coming to the mat and giving yourself that appreciation. Bring the forehead to the knees, the chin to the chest, and squeeze it out. And on the inhale, extend arms overhead, legs long. Exhale, round and squeeze. 
Inhale, extend and lengthen. And move through this two more times, your own breath. There's no right or wrong way. It's just starting to create a little bigger movement here. And next time you come to knees to chest, settle the head, the shoulders back down. And let the hands find the back of the thigh. From here, we're going to just roll up and down the length of the spine. Feeling a little massage, just letting it move. If that's uncomfortable for your spine, don't even bother. Just come up to seated. And then turn to face you here as my legs come to cross. Shift and shimmy the hips so that you can broaden a little bit more to the hip line. On your inhale, reach both palms skyward. And as you exhale, take that left hand down to the mat. Stay there and push into the left hand and lift up out of the right rib cage and take a micro bend in the bottom elbow, feeling that extension through your right rib cage. Really root the right sits bone down. Inhale, draw back through center and switch the hand the opposite direction. Stay lifting the left side, push down to the right, and then take that gentle fold. Once again, rooting down in the sits bone of both sides equally, feeling that side body stretch. Coming back through center, let the legs come to lengthen. Drawing the legs together like you've got a zipper and you've pulled that zipper up the thighs and the legs are knitting together. The toes are pulling back toward the face. The fingertips come to the ground, the shoulders wrap back and the core is engaged right here. Feel this active staff pose, this dandasana here, this active stick posture. Keeping the bottom half of the body fully active, sweep the palms high. Chest stays lifted, back's not gonna bend here. You're just gonna simply hinge at your hips. Hold it there and lift a little higher. Feel your navel pull towards spine. Keep the space between the ear and the shoulders and fold a little deeper. Nice job, guys. Inhale, lengthen, and then fold to your edge. If you have a block or a soup can, you're always welcome to bring it underneath your forehead to give a little bit of support in the body. Elbows wide, chest lifted, pulling the belly toward the thigh. Inhale, lift it back up. We're going to cross the right leg over the left to give it a gentle hug midline of the body. Inhale, sweep the palms high, both sits bones fully rooted, flex through your left foot and take a gentle spine twist. Allow the shoulders to soften and begin to pull the belly button back away from the thigh. And as you inhale, lengthen. And as you exhale, twist a little deeper. Noticing the active straight leg, noticing the shoulders drawing away from the ears. Coming back through center, simply counter twist. Your fingers will come to the floor. You're just going to take a gentle little twist right here. Coming back through center, remembering as we go through this process not to neglect our breath. Bringing that opposite knee to bend, crossing over, flexing through the extended foot, hug the knee into the chest and lift out of the sternum. Sweeping the palms high, taking your twist over to the left, hugging that knee in toward the chest, and then softening the belly away from the thigh. Inhale, flexing through that long leg, exhale, twist deeper. If you find that you're clenching your jaw, relax your jaw. Come back through center, find that gentle counter twist here. Fingertips find the floor and you're just taking a little tiny spine twist right here. Maybe glancing over your right shoulder. Come back through center, let the legs come to lengthen, give them a little shake out. We're gonna sweep the feet to the front edge of the mat. 
and roll over your feet to come into a tabletop posture. However you want to get there, we're going to spend very little time on our wrists today. So this will be a lot of time right here spent to just warm up our spine. As you bring the fingertips underneath the shoulders, spread them wide and begin to push into the fingers so that you dome out the upper back through the exhale and you draw the navel toward the spine and you round out. And then as you inhale, feel your heart scoop between your shoulders. Open it up, lift it up, lift the tail. Exhale, push away the ground beneath you with your toes, with your fingers. And inhale, lift and scoop it up. This is where the practice can become your own right here. You can choose to continue to flow through cat and cow or change a little bit of your body's perspective of the posture and maybe draw circles with your hips. That always feels really nice, especially if you're a runner, just rocking your hips side to side. Maybe tuck the toes. We always do this posture with untucked toes. Maybe today you want to try a little cat and cow with a little bit of a tucked toe and see how that changes the perspective or the feel of that posture. And then finally, take a moment to just rock some weight into your wrists. Maybe turning the fingertips out and rocking the shoulders side to side. And then turning the fingertips in and rocking the shoulders side to side. Coming back into that tabletop posture. This is going to be a downward facing dog just as a travel posture to step forward and work your way to the top of your mat. We're going to take a ragdoll posture. So you're going to find a shelf at the top of the legs, belly to the thigh, and then grab the elbows, let the head hang heavy between the arms, and just ragdoll the body side to side. Belly stays attached to the thigh, but the sits bone can begin to reach higher as you begin to find a little stretch in the hamstring. You can find playfulness in this posture, perspective change, maybe. Elbows wrapping behind the neck, or maybe interlacing hands behind the back and sending knuckles high. Whatever feels good for you, just take a couple more breaths here. Let the hands come to the ground, tuck the chin, and we'll articulate the spine to come to stand all the way up top of your mat, mountain pose. Take this moment here, rock your weight front and back to find an even balance between the ball mount and the heel of your foot. And then simply soften the knees down. Feel how the quads, the hamstrings engage. The low back gets long. The rib cage draws back. Palms are down as the shoulders begin to draw away from the ears. The crown of the head extends, starting to find length. For those of us who are 5'2", this will make you feel taller, makes me feel strong, makes me feel taller. Find a deep breath in and a breath out. Maybe soften or close your eyes entirely, reach your palms up high, and let the hands come to heart center. Settling the hands to heart center, if it's in your practice, to set an intention. Maybe it's a prayer, a thought, a mantra. This is your opportunity to do so. If that intention of perspective is resonating with you today, feel free to hold on to that as your intention. Whatever your intention may be, breathe it in deeply. Hold it in the heart center. Open mouth, exhale, let it go. Let it feel like supported by those who are here practicing with you today. Inhale and exhale. Flutter the eyes, open, inhale, reach both palms up high. Flip your right 
palm. Ground down to the right foot. Take a dive over to the left. Really starting to feel the right rib cage open up. Maybe glancing in front of your right shoulder a little bit. I'm just going to give a little turn so you can see where I'm going in my body. Come back through center. Ground down to the left foot and find that dive going the opposite direction. Maybe glancing in front of your shoulder. Coming back through center, wide arms forward fold as we swan dive down all the way. Bring your hands to your shins and inhale, lengthen through your spine for a gentle halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Tuck the chin, lift the body all the way, mountain pose, sweep the palms up high. We're going to open twist toward my direction bringing your arms to T. As you do that, your hips are gonna stay square toward the mat. And you're gonna keep the shoulders tick-tocking open so that you feel that extension in the rib cage. Let the back hand float down, the top arm float up and revolve a little stretch here. And then inhale back through center. Take that open twist the opposite direction. Feel the rib cage knit in. Tick top the shoulders, but the hips stay square forward. Floating that back hand down, front arm up, exalt. Inhale, sweep it up. Prayer arms forward, fold all the way down. Hands to shins. Inhale, halfway lift. We're going to grab our blocks or our soup cans. Bring them underneath your shoulder right here. And draw the right heel up toward your glutes. Feel how that lifts and grounds down into the opposite foot. And then begin to pull your knee in towards your chest. Rounding the spine. Think warrior three as you kick that foot back. And then draw it back in towards your chest. Little rounding of the spine, navel towards spine. Kick it right back out with control. Step it down to lunge. Shift the blocks back and drop down to your back knee. Untuck the back toe, ground down to the shin. We're going to take half split and low lunge just a couple times to create a little bit of movement in the hips. Once we find ourselves coming back into that low lunge, we're going to stay there. Your front knee is bent directly over your ankle. Your back knee is grounded down the shin. Bring your hands to the top of the thigh and push down to lift up. Feel how your shoulders stack over your hips, and you're going to feel a nice little stretch in the hip flexor. You can even go a little deeper into it, just softly nudging into that hip flexor. Hold it here. Draw your shoulders back. Feel your rib cage and navel pull back. Really engage in the posture. Your hands can remain on your knee, or if you're feeling really strong in the posture, feel the freedom to float the palms up, soften through the shoulders. Pinky rolls in so that you feel a more space between your ears and your shoulders. Your left knee is forward. You're going to flip your right palm. Take hold of your right wrist and take a stretch over to the left side, really grounding down to the shin of the right leg. You should feel this in that hip flexor of the right side. Come back through center. Your hands will find the blocks. Straighten that front leg. Now, I want you to shift the front leg a little further forward, but you're gonna bring your back knee and hip in line with one another. Shift your blocks or your soup cans underneath your shoulders and lengthen, pull your toes back and keep your hips level. And then with a nice straight back, take those micro bends as you fold through the hip. Getting deep into the hamstring. Maybe you find a little playful movement. Maybe you roll your pinky edge to the left. Maybe you roll your big toe edge a little to the right. 
Come back through center. Push down with your hands to lift up. Bend back through the front knee. Set those blocks or soup cans to the side. Bring your hands to the ground. We're simply going to step back to a tabletop or a downward facing dog. Your choice. Find your breath here. If you're desperate for a vinyasa flow, you are welcome to flow in today's practice. I will not be cueing it. Bring your right leg high. And then we're going to bring that right leg all the way through. If it takes a couple steps, that's all right. Just bring that leg all the way through. Grab your blocks and drop down to the back knee. Same thing here, pulsing half lunge, or split rather, to that low lunge. And just notice on this side how it feels different. Perspective from one side to the next can change. Next time you come into that low lunge, hold it there. Ground down to the shin of the back foot. Bring your hand to your front knee. Push down to bring your shoulders over your hips. When you find that, you start to find a little stretch in the hip flexor of the left leg. Maybe you shift your right knee a little further forward, still keeping it trapped in line with the front ankle. You're going to find a little deeper stretch in your hip flexor right there. Hands stay firm or they sweep up your choice as you melt the shoulders down the back. Pinkies roll in. Ground down into the back shin and flip the left palm, grab a hold of the left wrist. Reach up out of the left side body, then take a fold over to the right. Nice, feel that stretch. Come back through center, let your hands find the ground, and then straighten through that front leg. I like to bring my back knee to that 90 degree bend and then kick that front leg a little further forward. Travel the blocks back in line with the shoulders so you can find that length. Broaden through the chest, the collarbone. Pull your toes back towards your face. You'll find those little bends in the elbows. You'll find a hinging at the hips as you fold into the posture, keeping the back nice and long. Hold it here. If you played with the other side and you want to play with this side, maybe you roll your toes to the outer edge of the mat and then you roll them in. Just notice what feels different in this side of the body. Coming back through center, press down, lift up. We're going to step forward, top of your mat, forward fold. From here, if you have your blocks, you may want them once again. As we lengthen our spine, you're going to simply bend your right knee. Place your right hand on the ground and twist open through the left side. Keep your left leg nice and straight. You should feel a little bit of a booty pop right here. Exhale that hand down. Bend the left knee straight in the right and take that twist the opposite direction. Notice by using props, you give yourself the ability to have a nice flatter back. Tuck your chin toward chest slowly, come to rise. Inhale, sweep palms high. Exhale, hands, heart center. Take a moment, find a couple breaths in your mountain pose. We're going to start to work our way into some more heated postures. So get ready for that. If you'd like to take a quick drink, feel free to do so, knowing that you can rest in child's pose anytime you want. This is your practice, your body. So coming back to the top of the mat. Feet are hip distance apart. Inhale, sweep palms high. Let's sink our hips back into chair pose. You could toss that up. Finding a nice even balance between the heels and the ball mount of the foot, but letting the toes stay soft. Keep your hips and your knees pointing forward as you open twist your shoulders. You're going to find a temptation to draw your hip back. Pull it forward and feel how that requires you to activate the legs even more. Sweep the palm high. 
and then take it the opposite direction. Squeeze the inner thighs. Tick tock the shoulders. Open, open, open. Knees are level. Hips are level. Sweep palms up. Exhale, forward fold. Hands find those soup cans or blocks. Your left knee comes to rise, heel to glutes. Ground down into that right foot deeply. And then push back into your left, almost that warrior three supported here. And as you exhale, bring your knee toward chest, round the spine, navel pulls up. Inhale, press it back, lengthen. Square hips, exhale, round. This time we lengthen, we find a little hold right here, find some balance right here. I'm gonna step that left leg way back to lunge. This time grounding down to the front leg, we're gonna sweep up high, soften the shoulders, and then find that bend in the back knee to hover. As you hover, you're gonna scoop a little bit through the tail so that your navel pulls back, soften through the shoulders, let everything extend. And take little pulses here for five, four, three, two, one. Push down on both feet so that both legs straighten. Pull your right hip back, left hip forward. And then reach forward. You've got a little tiny softening in the front knee. Push into the big toe. Engage the trunk of the body. And then rise back up. This time, step the back leg a little further forward. Let the heel come to the ground. Continue to pull the right hip back, squaring off hips and shoulders. Reach, 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 reach. Going into our pyramid pose until you can't go any further. This is where those blocks and suit cans come in handy. You're gonna frame out your ankle so that your back is straight. Pull your right hip back, left hip forward, and squeeze the inner thighs together. Soften the front knee, push into the big toe of the front foot that helps. And then find those little bends in the elbows, keep the back straight. Go to your edge. Notice if any locking out, notice any tightening in the jaw. Push down, lift up, step back, downward facing dog. Once again, you can choose a tabletop instead, your choice. This time the left leg's gonna float up and it's gonna come all the way through to find that runner's lunge. We firm our foundation. Your front toe and ankles are all in line with your knee. Back foot pushing back, sweep the palms up high, stack shoulders over hips, and then micro bend and then deeply bend. Now we're in double nine degree bends in our knees. Shoulders are over hips, that tail is long, your spine feels long. I'm gonna take those pulses here for five, four, Three, two, ground down into your big toe of your front foot, lengthen up. Continue to track your left hip back. Push into the big toe of your left foot, soften your shoulders, reach the palms forward, flat back. All the way, all the way, all the way, and hold it. And push down with your big toe, lift back up. Step your back foot slightly forward, so you're setting up that pyramid pose. This is gonna bring your left hip back, right hip square, so both hip bones are facing the same direction. Reach forward, 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 until you can't go any further with that nice flat back. Grab your blocks, soup cans, bring out your ankle. Soft in the front knee, pressing down into the big toe of the front foot, press down the pinky edge of your back foot. Pull your left hip back. Little bends in the elbows, take you deeper, but keep your back as flat as possible. Find your breath and notice the perspective on this side. It might be different. 
The sensations you feel are going to be different from side to side. Push down with your hands, lift up with your heart, bend into that front knee. Simply step forward to a forward fold at the top edge of your mat. Go ahead and shake the hips left and right. If you like that revolved forward fold here, you can bend the knee with the hand to the ground, twist it out. And then switch sides, bending the hand that the knee is. Coming back to fold, reversing your swan bed all the way up. Hands come to heart center. I'm going to turn to look at you as we start to find a little bit of balance in our posture here. We're not going to quite need our strap yet, but we will need our strap or a blanket in a few moments. But from here, we're just going to play a little bit with a simple pose that can be so complex. We're going to take a tree pose. We're going to find balance in that right foot. And your tree pose is about opening the opposite hip and stay neutral through your um, hip bones. So our hips should not be pushed to the side as we go into that posture, but rather staying lifted through center. We're gonna begin the posture by bringing that left foot just to kickstand. And notice instantly your hip wants to kind of pop out. Pull that hip back in so you're squeezing in. You're turning that knee toward the outer edge of the room. If this is easy and this is something you can do, can travel up to your calf, no problem. You want to push the foot to the calf, push the calf to the foot. Avoid the kneecap entirely. If you choose to come up to your thigh, you can place it on the thigh and not the kneecap. Push the foot onto the thigh and push the thigh into the foot. Maybe start with your hands to heart center, pushing everything to center. Open up through that lifted hip. Ground down through the base foot. You're welcome to stay here or you can grow your tree. It's okay to fall. It's okay to come out because we're human and that's what we do. But just take a moment, really opening up that hip. Maybe play with the hands if that feels good and confident. You can interlace them, lift the chest, and slowly come out of the posture and just rock the hips side to side. Grounding down in the opposite foot. That base foot is strong and it's secure and it's pushing down and it's drawing in. Starting with the ankle. That feels okay. Your knee's pointing out. Bring it up to the calf. Watch the outer hip pushing out to lose stability there. Bringing that foot maybe up to the inner thigh. Push the foot to the thigh, the thigh to the foot. Hands to heart center, pushing everything to center. Maybe you find a drishni or a focal point on the ground. That focal point will help you stay balanced. You're welcome to stay here. You're welcome to extend. I find a growth in your tree. Or sometimes our branches break and we fall, and that's okay. Because there's room for regrowth. Let it go when you're ready. Shake it out. Beautiful. So that posture can be so much more complicated than, um, than we often think it is um, because we often don't pay attention to drawing everything to center. So we're gonna do one more balancing pose and then we're gonna start to wrap it up here, all right guys? So this next balance pose, this is where you're gonna want your strap. So I like to bring the strap around my neck so it's available to me. Once again, if you have a nice belt in your closet or a towel will even do. I'm going to find balance in the right foot and bring that left foot up to hover. From here, you're going to take that strap and loop it around the ball bound of the foot. Bring the same hand to foot. Bring that rope as close to the foot as possible. And then begin to lift up the chest. So think almost happy baby, right? So you're almost in a happy baby variation here. And then push the foot forward. Push the base foot down. Be mindful that you're not locking your knees, but you're staying with a healthy micro bend in the knees. This may be your expression today. You may choose to begin to extend open 
Once again, thinking the same concept as tree pose, you're drawing that base hip in. You're pushing through the flexed foot of the lifted leg. Taking a couple more breaths here. We're going to slowly draw back to center, maybe unravel the same way you came in. I like to give my hip a little roll out when I come out of these postures just to find some release. Now we're going to find the other side. If you don't need to use the strap, you can always take piece fingers to big toe. I'll show that as well. We'll ground down into that left leg, find that kind of variation of Happy baby, peace fingers to big toe. Maybe from here, you take that strap, bring it around the ball mount of the foot. Pull the shoulders back, ground down into your base leg, flex through the foot that's lifted. Pull the shoulders back over the hips. This might be it, guys. Maybe you wanna tee out the shoulder, Pushing that base leg hip in and externally rotating through that standing lifted leg. Find your breath. Focus on that spot in the ground in front of you. Focus on your heart center. Slowly unravel. Let it feel some release. Nice job. Hope everybody's doing well. We're gonna to step to the top of our mat. We're gonna to start to unravel our postures today. Hands come to heart center. Close your eyes for just a moment. As you close your eyes, I want you to focus on your breath. Notice what your breath is doing. One of my favorite quotes about perspective is from Maya Angelou. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. So simple, yet so hard. Finding your breath in mountain pose. Bringing the palms overhead. Come high onto your toes. Bring the shoulders to soften away from the ears as the palms roll down. Find your stability. Squeeze your inner thighs together. Pull your shoulders back. And we're going to melt down. And every time you go lower, lower, I want your heels to come higher, higher, lower, lower, higher, higher. Navel towards spine. All the way, all the way, all the way down. And let it go. I'm going to turn once again to face you here. I'm going to let the legs come to lengthen, pulling the toes back toward the nose. Shift so that there's extra flesh that's underneath your backside is gone. Ground down. Let's find that same posture we introduced in the beginning of practice, that active Dandasana or stop pose. Pushing down at the fingertips, rolling the shoulder heads back. And then pull the shoulders away from the ears. Feel the spine get long as you move down, lift up. Next inhale brings palms high. Without rounding the spine, just reach up and forward as you hinge the hips. Pause. Inhale, lift a little higher, maybe even shimmy a little bit. And then fold a little deeper. Pause. Shimmy a little bit. Fold a little deeper and find your full expression. Let it surrender entirely. And you may find that from the very beginning of class to now, your perspective on this posture has changed. Maybe this time it feels good, like a release. Last time it felt tight and comfortable. Whatever your sensations feel, take another deep breath in. Embrace that sensation and then let it go with your exhale. <sighs> Slowly ride the posture back to seated. Bend the right knee. From here, you can take your spine twist here. You can take your spine twist with the foot over. 
You can even tuck that bottom foot. Let's change this posture slightly from the very beginning of class. Both sits bones rooted down. Hugging the knee to the midline of the body, belly pulls away from the thighs. You can find your low belly engaged. At the palms, we will first turn into the bent knee, letting the right hand land behind the body, the left hand come downward. And even use that kickstand and hand to twist you a little deeper. Looking over your shoulder, finding that twist. Slowly crawl to that counter twist, fingertips to the ground. I like to bring my chest a little further down, the second round, maybe even let the shoulders rock a couple times, noticing what my spine feels, what it likes, what it doesn't like. Come back to your center. Let the legs straighten out, shake them out. And then we'll bend the other knee. You can stay here, you can stay here. Or you can tuck that toe under, completely changing the perspective and the feel of the posture. Rooting down through sit bones, hugging the knee to the chest, wrapping the shoulders down away from your ears. Inhale, sweep your palms high. As you take that twist, let the right hand come down the thigh, the left hand come behind your side body, so that you're feeling it almost like a kickstand, so it can twist you just a little bit deeper. And counter twist, hands to the open side of the body. Once again, just notice what feels good here. I'm noticing I'm a little extra tight in this hip. So finding this posture feels a little different on this side. Coming back to center, we're gonna sweep the feet onto the mat. And we're gonna go for a little boat ride here. Once you have your sits bone fully rooted down, and the navel pull toward the spine. Let your hands come behind your knees and pull your shoulders back so that there's lots of space in the collarbone. From here, options. Toes can lift. Heels can lift. Full thighs or shins can lift. Legs can lengthen. Hands can release. We're going to take both here for five. Four. Pull the shoulders back. Three. Two, shake a little one, nice. Roll over the knees, come into a tabletop posture. One last time. And I want you to notice here as we come into this tabletop posture and you begin to go through cat and cow. Notice your spine. Notice what you feel in your body and how it feels from the beginning of class to now. Just going through the breath at your own pace. Maybe rocking into the weight of the wrists or the weight into the wrists and letting the hips roll a little bit side to side. Once again, noticing what changed from the beginning of practice to now. And then coming to seated on the mat, legs once again draw forward. And find yourself seated toward the center of your mat. And you can choose right here how you want to come to recline posture. You can surrender, or you can let yourself find a little, little core work on your way down. I'm feeling some surrender right now, so we'll go ahead and find our way down to our mats. And draw both knees into the chest. Give them a gentle hug and rock them side to side. Notice your low back here as you take your knees clockwise and take them counterclockwise. We're going to come into one final spine twist on each side. So let both knees just fall over to one side. And feel as you arrive there, your chest broaden and shift so that both back shoulders are landing on the ground. Take a deep breath in. And when you exhale, see if you can just melt a little deeper. Next, inhale, pulls the knees, the chest rocks you side to side. 
before dropping the knees over to the opposite side. Once again, little shift and shimmy so that your shoulders are both resting on the mat beneath you. Opening up to the chest some. Coming back through center one last time. Bring your feet to the mat. We're going to take a rippling movement between bridge and recline. Pressing into your feet, lifting up with your fingers. Let the hands float overhead as you come to extend. And then as you exhale, lower the hips, lower the hands. Inhale, push into the feet, push into the shoulders, lift everything, hands overhead. Exhale, slowly ripple back down. Take it one more time. And let everything go. From here, we find one last happy baby. The feet come open wide over the knees. The knees wider than the hips. Maybe a little rocking side to side. You are welcome to stay here. You are welcome to begin to extend the legs. Coming to your Shavasana, palms open, breath settling. And if you're rolling up your mats right now, I offer you to just take this last few moments with your eyes closed in this posture. Notice your breath. Notice what difference your breath is from now from when we started. There's a song that I've come to appreciate as of late. And it goes a little something like this. A thousand bad days make a thousand great stories. Actually, Messing that up. 100 great days makes 100 great stories. 100 great stories makes me interesting at parties. It's kind of an alternative song. It's a fun little catchy song. But it's such a song about perspective. All these bad experiences happening to this person over and over again have created this opportunity for this individual to really tell some great, inspiring, fun stories and make him a really entertaining. That's a song about perspective. That's a song about someone who changes lemons into lemonade. Let your jaw soften, let your neck relax. Take a deep breath in, let the belly rise. Let the belly soften. In your Shavasana, begin to find little tiny movements in your body, the ankles, the wrists, the shoulders, the elbows. And draw the knees into the chest. And roll over to your favorite side for just a moment before pressing up to seated. Easy pose or Sukhasana. Legs crossed, hands to heart center. Take notice of the posture and how it feels. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. It's all about perspective. The light and the love in me creates and honors the light and the love in you. Namaste. Thank you guys so much. Those who stayed the whole time, I appreciate it. If you um, didn't get an opportunity to join me for this live class, I've posted um, all of my playlist on this. You're welcome to click on that. And um, can't wait to see you guys again. Happy Wednesday. <laughs>